Well, we are doing the gratitude challenge. We're not just learning about the topic. We're actually practicing to become more grateful people. And uh, one of the people that I am most grateful for is Dr. Rick. Uh, and so I thought it would be wonderful today to have a conversation about gratitude as we think about life change, uh, the problems that we all face in life, why it is that people go to therapy. Rick, you will have had a ton of experience, I'm sure, with really cranky people and um, trying to figure out how to help them be able to move forward in life. So I'd love to... Oh, hang on a second. Hey, Mark. I absconded with this last Hey, this is, this is my landlord, Mark, just so everybody's able to see him. Oh, you're Hi. actually being recorded right now for the whole world. Hey, Mark. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so I'm grateful for Mark, too. And I'm grateful when he came into my office today, he didn't bring any dogs with him. But anyway, Rick, I, I'd love to hear a little bit from uh, the perspective of a clinician. You know, when I think about the problems that people typically go to a, a therapist about, it might be anxiety or depression or something like that. How do you think about gratitude? Is that a topic that comes up? What's your perspective on that? Well, thanks, John, and good morning. I have loved listening in on the Gratitude Challenge. I'm listening to it with my little journal uh, in front of me every morning, so I'm really grateful for your focusing on this at this time of year, especially. And yeah, it gives me a lot of thoughts. You just mentioned anxiety and depression and people coming in to see me as a counselor. And uh, a, a couple of different thoughts. One, I was thinking back to a sermon series, uh, our pal Rankin Wilborn, who we talked mm -hmm. to once in a while together. He preached a sermon series many years ago. He called it the 10 words, and it was about the 10 commandments. Essentially, he says that the 10 commandments weren't meant as a killjoy for human flourishing. Mm -hmm. Instead, they were the recipe for a um, you know, life-giving, experience in this world and the way to flourish and to thrive. And I remember when he talked about the 10th commandment, thou shalt not covet. He defined coveting as wanting any other portion in life than the one that you had been already given. Mm. And in the passage in Exodus, it talks about not coveting your neighbor's uh, house and not coveting their spouse, basically not mm. coveting their life. Yeah. Um, and he went in and talked about that. And, you know, obviously that has all kinds of permutations for materialism and that sort of thing uh, in our day. Um, but at the end of the sermon, when he was making application, he said that the antidote to coveting, and I think about this because it seems so often to lurk underneath people's anxiety and depression uh, and unhappiness when they come to see me. Um, that the antidote to coveting, to wanting more uh, than you have been given, more than the portion that you have from God, uh, was gratitude, hmm. the very thing that you're talking about, that hmm. cultivating, practicing, uh, figuring out how to become a grateful, thankful person was the best way to basically deal with materialism, wow. to deal with uh, desiring things that you don't have, uh, that sort of thing. Um, so I just thought that was such a nice tie-in to uh, what you're talking about, that to flourish and thrive in this world, and you've been making that point in most mornings uh, on gratitude, uh, that, that a way to get away from obsessing. I was remembering also a, a, a sermon series that you did some years ago where you were encouraging people to just be content with what they had, whatever house mm -hmm. they had or car they had or clothes they had. And I, th I think you might have had people build a practice where for, do you remember that? Where you would maybe ask them for 30, 60 or even longer days to just focus on what you had and don't yeah. think about the next thing. Yeah. Yeah. How often do people come to you? I mean, again, I think of people coming to see you because they're depressed or because they're anxious. How often do people come to see you where their identified issue is? I'm just not very grateful. I would say never. They, that's not why they come. It yeah. ends up being an out forth output of the work together. You know, yep. it's not it's not a conscious thing. Oh, I'm not a grateful person. Um, kind of gets at all the study on positive psychology about the benefits of gratitude 
And you know, why, why don't we do it more? And some of it is maybe a focus issue. I think that's why your series is so helpful to just make it, us it, think of that. Right? It's an interesting question. There's a, a great quote by the essayist Joseph Epstein where he says, uh, envy is the only one of the seven deadly sins that isn't any fun. Yeah, oh, and I remember it's really that. True when you think about uh, people may run after greed and anger makes you feel self righteous and lust and sloth can be enjoyable. But envy, um, it's a miserable way to live. I was thinking as you were talking, some folks listening now will probably remember the movie Amadeus, mm -hmm. oh, where yeah, the great. the Salieri uh, the character Mozart. in the movie Salieri is a very gifted musician but he's consumed with envy over Mozart's gifts. And Amadeus, of course, means friend of God. So there's just all this material in there about, does God play favorites? Um, why is this other person uh, who is so unworthy, so uh, extravagantly gifted and I'm not, and therefore I must be miserable. And uh, it, it struck me watching the movie, uh, Salieri, he, he could have said actually, my gift is I get to recognize the genius of Mozart and cheer him on and introduce him to the world. But because he wanted what belonged to Mozart instead of what could have been his, he ended up with neither and was just miserable. Such a very good example of coveting, isn't it? That I cannot yeah. think of a better one. And your question, John, it reminds me of a video we did a long time ago where you asked me the main issue that would come out. And I, yeah. I think I answered something like selfishness. Yes. And your question to me, does anybody come into therapy owning that they're a selfish person and that they want to work on it? And it's sort of yeah. like the question you just asked about thankfulness. And it kind of makes me think there are some character growth edges that we aren't aware of. We're just maybe aware that we're unhappy, we're anxious, we're nervous, we're depressed, we're sad. And that getting underneath that, like this gratitude hits me that way. like. It's almost like we have to be conscious about the issue of gratitude mm -hmm. for us to be able to yield to its benefits or to experience the benefits. It just doesn't come naturally. I'm not sure why. Maybe you can answer that question. Why doesn't, actually, as I'm just thinking about it, John, let me ask you that question. Why doesn't gratitude come more naturally to us? Um. I'll tell you the the story I was thinking about you were asking and then reflect back on the question is almost the opposite of Salieri in the New Testament uh, when Jesus has begun his ministry and John the Baptist disciples come running up to him and they say, uh, uh, you know, teacher, the, the one that you baptized, he's now launched his ministry and everybody's going to him. And so the disciples of John the Baptist seem quite jealous of Jesus's success because it's going to diminish them if their guy's not number one. And John the Baptist's response was, um, uh, I have told you from the beginning, I am not the groom. I'm not the, the Messiah. I am the friend of the groom. And when the groom comes, and that was kind of a, a particular role in weddings in that time. And he says, a man can only receive what is given to him by heaven. And that joy is mine, and my joy is complete. So I, I think there's something in there around uh, identity and feeling like this is who I am. This is who God made me to be. This is the calling and the role that I get to play. And that that's something that needs to be cultivated. I, I think that's been kind of a theme through this series is that um, yeah. gratitude is a learned skill. And um, probably we live in a world where um, we constantly receive messages because financially it's in people's interest to do this. You shouldn't be satisfied. You should not be content. But if you, you know, use me, buy me, wash me, try me, eat me, drink me, wear me, then you yes. can be. And so it's, uh, uh, it's just constantly, uh, we're constantly tempted to a life of discontent. The other thing, John, that the whole gratitude thing has been making me think is another thing that comes up a lot in therapy. I call it, and I actually stole this line from you from a book you did many years ago, gap management. Mm -hmm. And I think about, uh, I believe it was C.S. Lewis in one of his books, A Pilgrim's Regress. He talks about 
uh, the gap that is universal mm. between what we want and what we have, between the ideal and the real. I think yeah. he calls it the universal gap of longing, that all mm. of us are just made that way, that we long for more than we have. And he takes uh, two things out of that. I think he thinks of that as a, a argument for the existence of heaven, of a mm -hmm. world that we were designed to want more than this world can yeah. offer. And I've always loved that idea. Uh, that feels like a uh, sort of a beautiful way of thinking about it. The other thing, though, is that it also is a test of maturity. What do we do mm -hmm. with that gap? How do we mind that gap, the gap between what we desire and the fact that it won't be ever completely filled? Yeah. Um, whatever the desire that you have, that the way that we're made or the way that we're made in this world. Uh, and what do we do with that gap? And the same answer sort of to coveting strikes me, and this seems to come up all the time in therapy. People lacking contentment and having a mm -hmm. desire um, and I don't end up thinking that the desire itself is the problem, more it's the challenge oh, that's of really what good. do I do with it. How do I manage that desire? Yeah. Pardon? How do I manage that desire? How do I manage that desire? How do I mind that gap? And I think the main answer is also gratitude, is well, focusing once again on what I have and learning a learned skill. I really like the way you said that. I feel like that's such a good answer. It's not natural to yeah. be grateful, to be content. But if I focus on that with the very practices that you have us doing. But a, and another way I was thinking about you, the way to mind that gap is to be grateful and thankful for what other people have. Mm -hmm. To, you know, turn my mind into... Oh. The, Hey, you that's know, one of the good that John that, has that. Or, that's very or. striking, and uh, we well, we got to close now. But I, I'll close with this, and then invite you to think about three blessings or three gifts. But I was just reading this actually this morning that for Paul, you know, he's constantly giving thanks to God. He's kind of breaking this cycle in the secular Greco-Roman world where you use debt to get somebody else to pay you stuff. So he's recognizing God is the giver of all gifts, and so I want to be generous. But usually he's thanking God not for material benefits in his own life, not, you know, thank you that I got money, my 401k, and really nice sandals and a yeah. great, great chariot. Um, He's, he's mostly thanking God for what God is doing in the lives of other people. Um, very consistently at the beginning of his letters, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. And when other people grow in faith or when they grow in generosity, that actually fills uh, Paul with gratitude. So that might be a good thing today as you think about some blessings in your life. Think about three blessings today in life. And if you're able to do it sincerely, Think about blessings that have come to somebody else, maybe a friend or maybe a spouse or maybe a child or maybe a person at work and thank God. Um, I thank you that you gave to my friend Rick this keen mind and ability to heal people by his presence with them. And it gives me great joy to think about that. So uh, today, three gifts, three blessings, but in particular that you are grateful for that went to other people and that that can give you joy. We have so much to be grateful for. Thanks for joining us. To receive the emails that go along with each video, visit becomenew.me slash subscribe. If you'd like a text alert whenever a new video is posted, text the word become to the phone number 855-888-0444. You can send prayer requests to that number as well. To invite a friend, just share the link becomenew.me. We'll see you next time.